Rose, Rosemary, Bay Covey. I'm um, above the main door on the mezzanine level in Studio 224, and I've been here many years. Uh, I've been done many different moves within the building, and this, the Torpedo Factory, is my life. Okay, here's a project for the whole family. People often ask me how you get started with an idea. Well, sometimes a group is better than just one person to get an idea going. So everybody in the family would sit around the table and you'd all do some drawings. And it's not necessary that the drawing is um, of anything or that you have any skills. You can just do a lot of colors. You can, if you're better at drawing or feel like it, you could do something more like this. Um, kids' drawings are great. So everybody does their drawing, and then they switch them around, and firstly, photograph your drawing so that you have some record of it. And then the next thing to do is you take your drawing, and you hand them around, and you tear them up. And this is not that easy to do, because everybody really likes their piece, but it's very good for creativity to have to rethink everything you did again. So tear it up into little pieces and then, okay I'm tearing some more. You can use anything that you have here to make something new and everybody can work together and you think of it as like a puzzle. You're going to put together a puzzle and make something even better out of it. Or maybe not, but it'll be an experiment. So the best thing is to take a blackboard, a big piece of blackboard, everything looks better on black. Maybe you have some paper around that you can use, that you can add things to. And then start looking at what, what you have here in these squares. And maybe you can kind of create a different kind of garden, more abstract out of this. I started doing art when I was very, very young uh, with my grandmother in South Africa. I mainly lived for being with her and for um, making dolls clothes, I think was the beginning of it. Um, we had complicated games and we made sweaters for every doll and she taught me how to sew and crochet and um, I think all those things were the beginning of my realizing that that's where my greatest Play. Uh, well, my medium has changed a lot. It's almost like my life divided in half. Uh, when I, after university, I went back and worked with a printmaker, Barry Mosier, who um, taught me wood engraving very quickly. I only had a few days and then I taught myself. But um, I loved it. I immediately knew this was it and I worked in black and white for 20 years and then all of a sudden I started pushing the boundaries of it and working bigger and um, now I do huge installations and um, bigger paintings and many of them use wood engraving but in a much more exploratory experimental printmaking. So I'm still a printmaker but now I'm an experimental printmaker. <laughs> not a formal, trained formally but not working formally anymore. I get up in the morning and usually do some form of exercise briefly. Uh, and while I, I like exercise that I can think while I'm doing it, so probably not doing the exercise very well. Um, but I'm planning my day <laughs> and how I'm gonna do my work that day. And so it varies, but mostly I've been coming in here and um, just working nonstop till dinner on our work. constant interactions with the people from who come and visit us, uh, who bring 
constant freshness to one's life, to one's work. Uh, nothing like having people reacting directly to your work and talking to you about it. And then I've had people use my work uh, for tattoos in Norway. One guy did that. Another guy actually here came in with tattoos based on my work. So I love all those kind of things. I love it when different ages work together because we bring such different viewpoints and collaborations are something I didn't do that much when I was younger, but when they work, they are the best because you're bringing different viewpoints and you're coming up with something that neither that not, nobody involved could have expected or done on their own. You either are so driven that there's no stopping you and you never stop, and that's not doing it for fun. I'm talking about doing it as a life's work. Um, I don't think you need words from anybody else. They can only hold you back. You're gonna take your own course, and you have to be willing to well, I don't even think it's a matter of willing. I think that you're, you're, there's no choice. It's like for some people, there's no choice. And that's the only reason to be an artist. Otherwise, um, if you're not driven, do something else. <laughs>